Hi, this is Lucky Singh, the property fixer, here to fix you and help you grow your property and your business affairs to the next level. So if you're looking for knowledge and insights about how to get involved in property, solve your problems about scalability in your property business, then do watch our 20 minute clips. We've taken them from hundreds and, well, thousands of videos that we've taken over the last six months and we've broken them into simple chunks which can make them useful for you. So do watch and do subscribe to our YouTube channel underneath as well. Good morning, United Kingdom. Good morning. And welcome Good to morning. the live drive time session with Ducky Singh, the property fixer. This morning, we have a wonderful guest. Her name is Julie Ford. She's going to be on this morning as well with us after another five or ten minutes after the introduction. And again, Lucky Singh, good morning. The property fixer, the live drive time session every morning, uh, Monday to morning. Friday. How are you doing? Morning, viewers. Well? Hope you're all well. Yeah. I wanted to say a big thank you for uh, pushing the group up to nearly three nine thirty five now. Nine thirty five. I think we're going to actually announce uh, possibly tomorrow, if not on Friday, that there's going to be some uh, special gift or. Um, activity, I think, for the thousandth member. So I am not sure whether they've got that range, but we will find out by Friday. Uh, I'll get a thumbs up from the team. Is that right? So, um, what's the weather like there, Lucky Sink? The weather is nice and uh, sunny and bright this morning. So uh, it's going to be a fantastic day, like every day. Fantastic, fantastic, and you're fantastic. The property fixer, the Ixer, the mixer, the mover, the Uber, the shaker, the maker of the square mile in London, Mr. Lucky Singh, the man who makes things happen. And this week's saying that if you get offered a ticket on the rocket, don't ask what seat, just get on. Obviously, that it has a different meaning for different people. So before I ask uh, Lucky Singh what that means, we're going to invite on Miss Ford. Can we get her on? She's there. She's backstage. Morning. How are you doing? Good morning. How are you? Great, great. All the better for listening to you and seeing you join us. Um, right. So, Morning, Julie. How are you doing? Julie, what yeah, part good, of you, the Lucky. United Kingdom are you at? I'm in very sunny Hemel Hempstead in Hertfordshire today. Hemel Hempstead, yes. Greater London. Is that right? Uh, and yes, uh, we're more outside of London. London. Ah, okay, so you don't like to be regarded as being in London. You like to be regarded as more Aylesbury, do you? More, oh, I um, wouldn't go as far Aston. as Aylesbury, that's pushing it a bit. <laughs> okay, Aston, what's it now? Aston, a little bit Church. between, a little bit between Aylesbury and London. I'm in the middle, in the middle. Being in the middle is not a bad thing all the time, I reckon. Absolutely. So, Julie, uh, before we um, go on to uh, you jumping on a rocket and not wanting to worry about the seat number. Give us a bit of an introduction about yourself. I know we've been told through uh, secret uh, information that's been revealed about you that you are a, a managing uh, managing agent, I think, for properties. I believe you've been in that industry for a while, and that you've you you actually did a a law degree, but for some reason did not decide to practice or take the um, the various practice exams. So uh, tell us about yourself, please, before we continue, so everyone knows who they are listening to. 
Okay, thanks very much for that. So um, I've been in lettings and property management um, probably about 25 years now. Um, my only. main job was working in the city only, yeah. Um, mm. I, my main job was working in the city as a property and asset manager for a large corporation where we manage properties all over the world. Um, most of my clients were celebrities. Um, <laughs> most of my clients were celebrities um so a few i can mention ricky gervais was one of my clients as a landlord ah, um, and I've right, been a, few, okay. um, a few um premiership footballers as well have been my we love landlords. ricky <laughs> everyone loves yeah, ricky, ricky gervais. i think ricky i think ricky lives somewhere over in is it hemel hempstead somewhere no, it's not Hemel Hempstead. He doesn't uh, live in Hemel Hempstead. However, he does film a lot here in Hemel Hempstead. His TV show Afterlife is filmed here in Hemel. That's right. So I think we he lives get there. To see him around quite a lot. Yeah, I think he lives somewhere over in Hampstead. Is it Hampstead? I think is where he lives. Probably. Probably. Yeah, it's somewhere in Hampstead. Okay. Yeah, Actually, exactly. his um, the guy that looks like him is a good friend of mine. His impersonator, and uh, okay. I think we might be doing some sketches with him. For the oh, show. Cool. Ah, okay. He's the impersonator for uh, Ricky Gervais. Very nice. Okay. Continue, Julie. So you were letting and managing properties globally. And you had famous people. You mentioned Ricky. Who else? I'm sorry, because as soon as you said Ricky, I was trying to work out which Ricky this is. Is it Ricky O'Sullivan or Ricky Gervais? And what the difference is? There's a big difference. Sullivan is a greasy a mechanic I know uh, in London. Normally does lots of uh, dodgy car work, gets lots of complaints. Uh, so you and, and anybody else on your list, VIP list? Premiership footballers, but obviously they come and go quite quickly, so I couldn't really list those off. Um, plus, I'm not really into football myself, so I don't really know if they're really good or not either. Um, but from the um, property management side of things, I then moved into new build sales, which was a bit of a left field for me. Um, and what I found with that was um, there wasn't a, a real platform there for when people have bought off plan and then something goes wrong and there's a snagging list that needs to be done. Because obviously the architects and all the builders and everything are concentrating on the next phase of the build. So there was no one there to sort of fix the problem. So that's, I kind of built up um, the snagging department almost, so to speak, for this um, development company um, and just mm -hmm. grew it from there. Um, and then Excellent. I... <laughs> I know. Um, then I took a bit of a step um, opening my own um, property management company, um, which is called Gothard Row. And I've had that for 11 years now. So I've just, that's, again, okay. Go opening... Gothard Row. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. Julie, sorry. So um, built up the portfolio from nothing um, to managing just over 500 properties. Um, and just that was over, the North, only, North area. Only 500. <laughs> Yeah, just a, just a few. Um, so I built that up while I was um, living in Norfolk, which was a bit of a, a move for me. Um, and then I sold that portfolio, um, but I kept the company name. And what I've done then from then is sort of a bit of evolving, really. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to be when I grew up. Um, after I'd done my law degree at um, uni, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with that. I wanted originally to be a criminal barrister, but that didn't come to fruition. I got married in between. And you know what it's like. You get your degree and you go, right, I'll go to the bar next year. I'll go to the bar next year. And all of a sudden, you're 10 years late and you're like, ah, oh, I never went to the bar. So it okay. never really came to fruition. But that was fine. It wasn't an issue for me. Probably and not then a I good idea worked. anyway to go to the bar during lunchtime. Probably good to stay sober. <laughs> it helps you in your work. Well, it depends. Some people function quite having well with a couple of glasses of wine. So you're having lots of wet lunches, were you, normally? Well, unfortunately, when you work in the city in that day and age, yeah, they were pretty wet. Wet lunches. Okay. So you um, worked in the city uh and uh, you had lots of wet lunches you ended up in how did what do you how did you end up in norfolk then what what was that about um that was just a bit of a personal situation for me um i had a family member who became poorly so i went up there to look after them um and it's like everything uh, you know obviously they passed away and for me it was like what am i going to do i'm stuck here in norfolk what's a girl to do in norfolk because that's a very much slower pace of life than i was used to in london um mm -hmm. so you know i had those skills i had that experience i had that which knowledge. part of norfolk were you in i was in swatham is that by the sea? No, it's not. It's um, sort of, do you know Deerham? 
Everyone is a new name to Lucky Singh, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Dear you know Swatham, can you do something you know, with Norwich? Norwich yeah, yeah, yeah it's Norwich, it's that makes sense. Norwich, but inland. Inland, inland. Towards, okay, that makes sense now. So Norwich and inland, uh, about an hour inland to Norfolk. So that's like the real centre of Norfolk, isn't it? The, yeah, in the middle much. of nowhere, in the sticks. Yeah. It's like no man's land. Swatham yes, absolutely. and Deerham, that sounds like really a forest. Is that where you were? Um, yeah, the, Norfolk is surrounded by Thetford Forest, so it is quite rural there. Rural, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. So coming from the city, what did you end up doing then in the middle of Swatham and in Deerham? So I started, like I say, I started my property management company and that's all it was to start with. I didn't do any lettings associated with that. I would work with other letting agents that didn't have substantial property management departments. So I would be their outsourced property management so they could carry on doing the letting side of things because that didn't really interest me. I'm not really a salesy kind of person. I leave that to the people with the pointy, shiny shoes. And um, I just left myself with the property management side of things, which as a natural problem fixer, for me, property management is just a brilliant fit. Um, I love the fact that it's one of those jobs where no matter who you're speaking to, nobody likes you. The tenant doesn't like you. The landlord doesn't like you. Your boss doesn't like you. You know, everyone's shouting at you. You can't do right for doing the wrong. The tenant doesn't do like you. Let right. me get, hold on. Let me get, let me get absorbed that. So as a property, <laughs> are you saying as a property agent or as a property fixer? Nobody likes you. As a property you. manager. Yeah, as, a, as a property manager. manager. So the tenant doesn't like you. The landlord doesn't like you. Who who else doesn't like you? The tenant doesn't like you. And nine times out of ten, your boss doesn't like you either. So they don't like you. <laughs> so that's okay. That's a good job to be in. It's a bit like being, it's actually like a bit like being a solicitor or uh, being a mechanic, isn't it? It's the same type of, you know, uh, what's it now? The, dispute that they give you for no reason yeah. so what happened then okay so you were being hated by all directions what happened <laughs> um I, my career took a, a change in direction um so i came then and moved to hemel so before i did that i sold the portfolio of management properties um but i kept the company name in case i ever wanted to do something more with it and uh, came to hemel and the one thing that hemel was missing was a property networking meeting so I set that up and that's now um, been running for a number of years as well. That's in its ninth year. So um, I'm quite successful with that. It's independent um, and it's not a selling platform like some of the other networking events. You kind of like go along and buy my book and I'll teach you how to be a millionaire. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. I, I think there is a platform for those particular networking events because everybody needs to go somewhere to learn how to buy their first property or grow their portfolio. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But what those networking events tend to then not do is once you've got the keys in your hand, they don't teach you how to be a good landlord. They don't teach you how to um, understand the legislation and just take the baby steps into being a landlord and what's important and understand. Okay, so it seems like it seems, seems like you've got a knack for uh, a sort of getting uh, in the grey areas and trying to fix things which nobody else likes to talk about so yes. you've done it on yes. the snagging side and and you've also done it in your networking uh is it is it actually an event or is it a webinar now or is it what is it with the, the lockdown well, are you actually prior, still running it? prior to lockdown it was physical events um so we'd have um obviously members turning up um to the events once a month um we'd have a speaker we'd have a legal update um, but those speakers wouldn't be the normal circuit speakers that you'd normally see in the networking field. These would be um, local businesses or local landlords talking about their stories and, you know, the pros and cons of getting into property. Because, you know, mm -hmm. we like to see all those wonderful shiny cars and, and the, the fantastic mansions. But we all know that actually property is quite hard work as well as being quite lonely. OK, yeah. Continue. Have it blocked out? Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So you take. <laughs> I sorry, I didn't get that. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's so. Fine. Okay. Yeah, I understand so now. Okay. So, so you had you had live stories being told by the landlords, and it was it's probably a bit more uh, 
the sort of like face-to-face -face, uh, examples from real landlords who are having to deal with the problems of property rather than trying to give, like you said, the rosy picture of the the money side of property. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And we'd have local businesses on as well, so local letting agent, local solicitor, local mortgage guy, to actually sit mm -hmm. there and go through case studies rather than, you know, come to me because I'm the best mortgage advisor. That's not what I'm looking for in someone. I'm looking for someone to be giving a lot more to the network than they're taking away. Excellent. That okay. That's quite interesting. It's a it's a it's a different way. It's an alternative, which is what we've set up for. So it sounds uh, like you're speaking our language. Okay. Um. So at this present stage, are you still in? No. Are you stuck in? Is it Dereham or what is the other place called? Longham? No, I'm I'm in sunny oh. Hempstead now. So I've been here. Oh, yeah, yeah, so I'm you're now in. Now. Okay, you're back to Hempstead. And were you? So you were originally in Hempstead, went to Norfolk, and you've come back again. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Right. The question of or the same for this week is um, to get a uh, offered a ticket on a, a rocket. Don't ask uh, for the seat number. Just get on. What do you have to say to that as a saying? What does that mean to you? Are you like that? Or would you like to check out the fuse are large? Hopefully not while the rocket's uh, ignited, but before you get onto the rocket, do you want to know what seat is yours? Or would you rather just jump on for the ride? I'm not interested in what seat number it is. Um, absolutely. I'd rather just jump on for the ride, but it has to be by a window seat. I need to be looking where I'm going. Okay, so you need to see where the rocket's going. Absolutely. I need to see the view. I need to see what's happening out there. Excellent. I like that. So you like to see what happens. And that's probably going back to your powers of observation in terms of identifying gray areas in businesses and trying to make them your niche. Talking of powers, we're going back to Lucky Singh, uh, a man of his own superpowers, comes from the uh, what was it, planet Krypton. And the only thing that can kill him or take his powers away or a piece of kryptonite or a big letter A, apparently, I've been told. So Lucky Singh, tell us about your powers. And tell me what that saying means to you now after having listened to Miss Ford, the fact that she wants to see where she's going. Well, I gave the analogy yesterday that because uh, <clears throat> I don't know anything about the rocket ship, I wouldn't just jump on. For me, it would mean that uh, I probably need to understand a lot more before I jumped onto anything because uh, I've done that too often in the past where I've jumped onto things, uh, quite sort of uh, not really actually looking at where things are going necessarily, but it sounded fun at the time. Um, so I'm actually like uh, really laid back. Something comes along. It could be a rocket ship. It could be a, a trip to Buckingham Palace. Um, it could be anything that uh, sounds amazing. But I wouldn't really just do it just because uh, <clears throat> sounded good. I'd probably want to know a lot more. You're probably very uh, so that would be my take on it anyway. You're probably like one of old. Sound like a dull accountant, don't I? You sound like more like a, a grumpy old man, Mister Thing. I didn't sound like oh. the energetic Mister Thing, cocky fixer <laughs> Mister Thing. But anyhow, let's jump over from there and go to the other question. Uh, somebody who, uh, the question of, or the question for today is, uh, Covert, I want to get a mortgage, uh, and what can I do if I've got a, a problem with my credit file? So, you've been in property for so long. What do you say to that? Is, is uh, credit file an issue? Uh, do you come across it a lot with your clients? How many clients are you servicing now? Who are you addressing the question to? to I'm Julie, addressing, or to there's me? only there's one good-looking lady and you, Mrs. Singh. So I'm addressing the, the good-looking young lady. 
Um, for me, it would always be go and speak to a mortgage advisor because um, unfortunately, I don't deal with the finance side of things with my clients um, and my landlords. Um, but with regards mm-hmm. to credit rating, I'm sure there's lots of things people can do to build that back. Um, but it wouldn't be really for me at this point to, to say what that is. It's not my area of expertise, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to hand back to Lucky for that. Okay, Lucky Singh, can you answer that question? Somebody needs a mortgage in the present scenario, and they've got a bit of a damaged credit file. Can they look to get a mortgage still? Yes, I mean, uh, talking to the property fixer, so anything's possible. <clears throat> but just got to be uh, careful that uh, you don't uh, underestimate or overestimate your position by not understanding the reality of your position.